I have some special guests down here with me today. It's June 19th down here at Applin Farms in Malvern, Alabama. We actually have a couple of uh, folks from the Auburn Bee Lab here uh, doing some studies on my bees. So it's kind of cool. I've never had anything like this, this before. So I'm going to flip this camera around, let them introduce themselves and kind of talk about what they're doing. It's pretty neat. I think it's some cutting edge stuff here. Okay, yeah. Hi, I'm Rogan Tokash. I'm part of the Auburn Bee Lab. And... Hi, I'm Alex Smith. I'm also part of the Auburn Bee Lab. All right, tell me what you guys are doing out here today. Yeah, so right now we're actually testing Bruce's bees for amitraz resistance with his Varroa mites. And so we know that Bruce, uh, from what he's told me, is he doesn't use a lot of amitraz or apivar in any of his colonies. Uh, so he shouldn't have high resistance levels. But what we do is we look for a frame that generally has some good um, open larvae, kind of like that. And what we're hoping to do is we're kind of essentially doing just a normal alcohol wash. So right now I'm just double checking to make sure that I don't have the queen because the last thing we want him to do is lose one of the queens from the colony. But I'm just gonna shake these bees out. And then we're gonna take about a half cup scoop. I'm just gonna let the foragers fly off, wait about 10 seconds. And then I shake them down. I get my half cup scoop and I put them right here. And so what we're actually doing right here in this cup is this is a test uh, done by Dr. Frank Rinkovich. And what he's found out is that apivar usually has in this one inch by one inch uh, kind of square, it takes about three hours for all the varroa mites that are susceptible to amitraz, which is the active ingredient in apivar, for them to fall. So what we do is we put binder clips on this and we can show this a little bit later, but we flip this cup upside down over a way boat that has Vaseline on it. And so then the mites will fall through this wire mesh. And then at the end, after three hours, we flip the cups back over. We do an alcohol wash in this cup with these bees and any mites that we find in the alcohol wash are thought to be amitraz resistant mites. And so they're mites that didn't fall due to the amitraz within this cup. And so it just is kind of a quick and dirty test in the yard that you can see what kind of amitraz resistance levels you have in some of your own colonies. Awesome, I do, I do use Apivar some, but I, I haven't used it in, a, it's been like last summer, so it's mm -hmm. been a while, so. All right, so as soon as Rogan gives me the cup of bees, I look into my pocket, I check my time, and I write down the time that the bees entered the cup, and then, I go and put binder clips onto the lids of them, and they sit upside down on this tray that is smothered in Vaseline. And the thought is that the bees will, uh, the mites will fall through and land and stay stuck on the Vaseline because the Vaseline uh, makes it so they can't just scurry away. <laughs> okay, awesome. So you're doing 10 uh, samples in each yard, right? Yes, sir. Okay, I'll see how you do it with the clips here. Mm -hmm. and the Vaseline right in here, yeah. and the mites fall down. All right, makes sense. Yeah, and then uh, I write down, so I'll just like put, I'll put uh, the end time, which is like three hours later. So okay. then I, when that time happens, I go and take the binder clips up and then I just flip it up. And then the thought is that all the mites that had fallen in those three hours were um, affected by the- Amitraz. Am yeah, by the yeah. Amitraz. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> now these are hives from Hawaii. What are the Kona Queens? The Kona Queens are from Zach Heinzelman and Heinzelman Apiaries, and they are not you know, necessarily mite resistant. They're just whatever. They're Cordovan Italian, I think, is their okay. primary genetic makeup. And he told me before I bought them, you will have to treat. But I've already split these once, and you can see they've already pulled some honey off of some of them. So mm -hmm. you can tell how productive they've been. And, uh, but I haven't been down in the brew boxes in these probably in... Oh, a couple, about six, six to eight weeks, probably a couple of months anyway. So I have no idea what's going on down there. I know they put some honey in them though. Yeah, we got a little bit of brood on this one, so we'll take it. The pros that work here. I was telling them my daughter goes to Auburn and of course I'm an Alabama fan. And so well, we can, we can extend the hand of fellowship or whatever. And we can be <laughs> friends for this type of a study if it helps the bees, right? Of course. <laughs> You guys traveling all over the state doing this or mostly just down here in this region? Well, uh, we are going all over the state doing amitraz resistance. So I got a grant from ADAI, Alabama Department of Agriculture and Industries. And what we're really trying to do is find alternative treatments to amitraz because through our collaborations with Dr. Rinkovich down at USDA Baton Rouge, he started to find that about one third 
of commercial beekeepers or larger scale beekeepers are seeing levels of amitraz resistance over 30%. And so um, what that kind of means is that the efficacy is 70% or under, and that's generally the threshold of where you're starting to see that beekeepers are having to treat more often okay. for the varroa mites because their treatments are proving to be no longer as efficient as what they were. Okay, we got down to the last one. This is one of my new queens that I graft. I'm interested to see, I haven't been down here in a while to see what the brood pattern looks like in this thing. It's pretty good. Bees look pretty calm, pretty healthy. Got a little bit of drone on the other side. A little drone brood, that's all right. I think drone brood can be a sign of a healthy colony, actually. It definitely can be, especially when allocated in the right spots on a frame. We try to find slightly younger brood to like older stage open brood, just because yeah. usually that rec like means that the nurse bees are on this frame. And those are the ones that if you have low mite totals, the nurse bees are the ones that are going to be having the mites, period. Huh, okay. And so reasonably i feel okay about this one and then of course we wait 10 seconds to let foragers fly off while you're doing that um have you guys done any of the horrible assay type stuff or ubo stuff at auburn yet have you gotten into that we study? have not gotten into that at ours um and actually yeah we almost got the queen in there so that's why we check oh she's a pretty one she yeah she's one that's actually marked that's good uh, several of those i never found them marked so mm. here we go i go back down and that was my fault for not looking no, better. That's okay. That's why you check. Like you but say, that's that why is, you have that intermediate step. I do the same thing. I'll find her sometimes in the, in the bin. Well, we double check. So really haven't started the Harbo or the UBS stuff yet up there? No, uh, we haven't. So a lot of our research focuses on working with commercial beekeepers on determining um, just different bromite treatments and especially alternatives to amitraz. And so we've partnered with a few commercial beekeepers and one of the things that we do when we uh, are thinking about what we're going to run for some of our studies in Auburn is we'll reach out to commercial beekeepers in the area whether that be Georgia whether that be Mississippi or of course in Alabama and we ask them and we kind of talk to them and we say hey if we try this in a trial and we find it works is this something that you'll think about implementing in your operation? Because the last thing we want to do is to do this big trial with all these different treatment groups and then go to the beekeepers and say, hey, we know this works. And they just say, hey, this isn't feasible. We're never going to be able to do this in no, our that operation. Makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. And I so, like and for me, having some experience at the commercial beekeeping industry, I did work a summer for a beekeeper who had about 30,000 colonies. You just get to see the difference between somebody and like us who just manage a couple hundred at the Auburn Bee Lab and, you know, the hobbyists that have, you know, five to ten of their own and the amount of time that you can take compared to somebody that's running through 20,000 colonies yeah, in a year. for sure, no doubt. Got to be efficient. It's got to be an efficient exactly. uh, treatment. So we did all ten of, your, uh, of our little samples and so this is the start time that the bees are put into the cup, and then this will be the end time that we will flip the, cu the cup over. Okay. And so uh, this one will be the amount of Roma mites in the Vaseline, and then when we do the alcohol wash, we'll count the amount in, the, in that as well. This will be the total. And then the... It's the apivore efficacy. So efficacy. we're going to divide the varroa in the tray with the total varroa, and that's going to give our efficacy percentage. And so generally the threshold is 70% efficacy. We want better than 70% efficacy because um, that means that amitraz is still pretty effective within your colonies. Mm -hmm. And so unfortunately, it's kind of this is a field test and it's kind of sure. a quick and dirty method. Mm -hmm. And so there's a few different things like we've found out that the colder that you keep your colony or you keep your kind of cups, if you're keeping them in 60 degree weather or 60 degree temperatures, that's not going to activate that apivar strip, yeah. that amitraz oh, okay. on it, and the mites aren't going to fall. So you kind of need to keep them a little bit warmer. So we sit in that car and we don't put the AC on. <laughs> no, that's not a problem in the summertime around Exactly. Here, so yeah, we have a couple that are just sitting in the car right now. And then lastly, you know, we count up the bees. And so this is another nice thing is we're providing the beekeeper with just 10 kind of alcohol washes in general, just so he has or she has the uh, ability to know what their infestation rate is and within their colonies. So we're just going to flip this cup back over. So this is a beekeeper uh, that we sampled earlier in the day. So it's been three hours. We flip that cup 
and I'm gonna look quick in here. We don't have any mites, but we did have mites on one of the previous ones. So you can see we have a single varroa mite down here in the tray. And so what that means is that that single mite was uh, susceptible to amitraz. And so it fell when it came in contact with that apivar uh, active ingredient of amitraz strip. And so what we'll do then is we have a few of those other samples. We took 10 from him as well. Uh -huh. And we're going to alcohol wash all of those. And so any of the mites that we find in the alcohol wash, of course, those are going to be thought of as the resistant. And so we're going to give him kind of an just an estimate of his levels of resistance within his yard. So I feel like three hours is enough huh, for that stuff. To and so, yeah, this has actually been a tried and true published study done by Dr. Frank Rinkovich at the USDA Baton Rouge lab. And so he's actually on my committee for my PhD. Okay. And he went through and had different times, different amounts of the Apivar strip for Amitraz. And he found that that one inch by one inch square for three hours is going to get just, most of that drop. It's just right there in the bottom of the, I'm gonna hold it up there for me a little bit. Look at Alex, just right, right down there is the strip, if you can see it. So the bees are kind of, they're kind of climbing on it. They're walking all around it, giving the, I guess, maximum exposure to the mites, mm -hmm. correct? Mm -hmm. That would be the idea, yeah. So now what you're gonna do is you're gonna take those bees, do an alcohol wash with them, and then count the mite drop from there, yeah. and that helps figure out your efficacy, is that correct? Yep, yep, so yeah, we'll see how many mites we found in there, and then we'll have a total number of mites, total number in the tray, and it'll just give us, you know, an estimate on the efficacy. So what do we have here? We have one that actually had a good drop, it looks like. Yeah, so this one looks like it had a pretty good drop, so, uh, well, for one, it either means that there were a lot of mites in the sample, and so we had okay efficacy, but it looks like we had a decent amount of drop from that apivar strip. So hopefully that his uh, bees or his mites within his colony aren't too amitraz resistant, because otherwise he might be having uh, quite a high mite load. No big problem. All right, mm -hmm. thanks. Yep. Cool. There he is with the alcohol wash on a previous sample from somebody else. That's how it's done. Mm -hmm. This is the real deal here, Auburn. Auburn Bee Lab, a pretty prominent program in the beekeeping industry. So I sure appreciate what you're doing and for coming down here today. And I look forward to seeing my results. Yeah, of course. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. I have to say, though, before you go, roll tide. <laughs> War Eagle. War Eagle. All right. You guys have a great day. Yeah, thank you.